Hey y'all! Well, we're back for more with the Swan hi 3.1A speaker mods. And this is kind of new stuff to me, so again, have to bear with me. I know some of you guys out there are sound engineers or mathematical geniuses that, you know, really dive into this stuff. And I'm taking a slightly different approach to this. It's going to be some trial and error. I am going to be studying the frequency response curves and, you know, some very basic kind of stuff. But a lot of this is going to be, let's see what happens when we put these in there and maybe do some basic changes to the crossover to get it to sound like I want it to. So my main complaint with this was there was not enough bass. I don't like using a powered sub. It takes up space in the room. That's my main listening room. I do have a powered sub downstairs with my little system because it's got little tiny speakers. But in my opinion, bookshelf speakers this size with a rear bass port, the way my room's set up, that the bass can reflect out of the port into the room, they should be able to supply all the bass that I need. And I'm not super into listening to like crazy heavy bass music, though I do listen to a few that are pretty bass heavy, and so it's important to me. Anyway, these were the drivers it came with. And I'm trying to like wrap my head around how the cone shape impacts the way the sound comes off of the driver. And I can't believe that it has no impact at all. I mean, you look at this mid range driver, and it's a dome, it's not flat, it's not a cone. They made it specifically with a convex shaped dome. Same thing with soft dome tweeters. They're not soft flat tweeters, they're soft dome tweeters for a reason. And when you look at these drivers, you know, this one has a much steeper cone angle, and then it's got this little plastic protrusion in the middle of it that doesn't move, which must be there to reflect sound waves or they wouldn't have put it there. They don't, it doesn't need to be there. That just adds to the expense of having the little guide and it rides around this thing. They would have just put a little dust cap on it. And so clearly that's doing something unless it's just there for aesthetics. And then like I've talked about, these two drivers, one came with this pushed in and one came with it the way it's supposed to be convexed out. And there's been a couple of people that said, there's no way that this could be pushed in that evenly. Well, if you look at it, you can see the little dents and stuff in it where it was pushed in. And the box it came in, the whole front of it was just blown out, punched all the way through. And they had put like Amazon tape over the top of it to seal the box back up. And so, but they do move nice and smooth. And, you know, I don't think they're damaged other than this, but I can't believe that that is going to have zero impact on the way they sound and it's why I kept these so we could experiment with that again these have this cool dome mid-range guy here that's got a sealed back and then it comes with this little ribbon tweeter which I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of and so I've got on the way it's not here yet it's supposed to be here tomorrow a soft dome tweeter that's in a little horn and then the same company and i'll put the name up here in the model number they've got another one that is just a plain soft dome tweeter that's not in a horn and so they all have this same 104 millimeter diameter and so it'll be fairly easy to swap these drivers out and see the difference between this ribbon tweeter, a horn with a soft dome in the bottom of it, and it's not a deep horn, it's only about this deep, and then just a traditional soft dome tweeter that's, you know, surface mounted kind of a deal. And the surface mounted soft dome is a lower SPL than the horn one is. So that will all be interesting to play with that and then the other thing that i'm thinking about doing with this is this is kind of my experimental speaker is putting this l pad on the tweeter and that way you can adjust the 
audio level of the tweeter and tweak it to whatever sounds good to me. And I remember years ago, I used to have this pair of Radio Shack Mach 1 horn-loaded speakers. And there was a horn tweeter and a horn mid-range and a big bass driver. And they had two knobs on the front of them for adjusting the volume level of the tweeter and the mid-range so you could tune it at the speaker instead of having to use tone controls in the stereo gear itself. And so I feel like this would might be a good way to be able to adjust the tweeter level when we're experimenting with these three different tweeters that I'm thinking about trying in this box. It'd be easy enough to put this on the back somewhere, maybe even pull the wires out through the port and hook it up, I don't know, but I'm probably gonna put it on the box itself. And that way I can adjust the tweeter levels to the what I wanna hear. So anyway, that's kind of an update of where we're at on this. And as you can see, I also changed the color. The yellow drivers in that black box with the other two drivers being black, it just looked weird. It made the woofer just jump out and then the other two were still just disappeared into the speaker. And maybe I was just being lazy too. I painted it with that textured black Krylon paint that kind of covers up any kind of goofs that you might make. And so I sanded that down and used that for the primer and then went back over it with this satin finish Rust-Oleum paint this time instead of Krylon. And I will say the difference I've noticed between Krylon and Rust-Oleum is the Rust-Oleum seems a little thicker and it also takes longer for it to dry. I don't really know how to say it. Well, you know, I'm not an expert on paint, but the Krylon seems more maybe like acetone based as far as like what, you know, evaporates out. And this is more oilish kind of based where it feels just thicker. And like I said, it takes a good 48 hours for it to even really get where I would say is dry. And then, of course, right at the top of it, when it was almost done, like a bug flies up and lands in the top of it. So, you know, it's the joys of painting outside. But for a spray bomb paint job, I think they came out good. And it's kind of a brick red color. I know it's kind of hard to see in video, but, like, that's cherry red. And I thought that would be, like, just too cool you know, in, in your face. And I think this brick red color is gonna look really nice with these yellow drivers. And so, that's the cool thing about DIY too. You can do them however you want. The previous ones I deal in kind of a teal green or a seafoam green color. And so, we're gonna go with brick red with yellow drivers. I think it's gonna be kind of a cool looking combo. So, the only other thing that I've got a mod, and I wish I'd done this before I painted it, so then I'm telling you, if you're going to be doing something like this to these speakers, do this before you paint them, because now I've got to be super careful. I've got to make this whole round, because it's designed to fit the back of this ribbon tweeter only, and the new tweeter has got a bigger magnet than that. It needs to be 75 millimeters hole probably going to come out here close to the edge kind of like this i don't know if i'm going to use the saber saw with like some felt padding on the foot of it and maybe you know let this paint get really good and dry and put some masking tape on here to protect it but i'm always scared when you pull the masking tape off sometimes the paint comes off with it and so you know i anyway i got to figure that out i may i may just put some paper over it and then use a felt pad on the bottom of my saber saw to cut that hole out bigger. But anyway, like I said, if you're doing this yourself or you're working on these and you're thinking about in the future, you might want to change this tweeter driver. Go ahead and cut this hole out round now so that something besides this ribbon magnet will fit in the box. So anyway, that's kind of it for the update on this. I'm going to be getting that driver in soon. Probably going to let these things cure another few days just so I don't mess up the paint before I try to cut this hole out. And then we'll be working on these guys. I did get the... Somebody corrected me. It's not Rev. It's Root. I don't even know how you'd say that. R-E-W software. And I haven't even started playing with that yet. 
And so I've got to kind of figure that out. If any of y'all know some good articles online to help me get started with that, if you could message me at the contact page on my website, it's down below, and point me in the right direction. YouTube flags, links. I mean, if you can try to put it in, but it may block your comment. I'm not sure how all that works, but I know YouTube doesn't like external links. Anyway, probably going to start with this driver, then we're going to go with this concave driver, and then we're going to go with the convex driver. And to put these in the box, the outside hole was a little too small to fit there. So it was either grind down the outside of the speaker, which didn't seem like a good idea. So I got like a one inch or half inch maybe sand and roll that would go in my Dremel tool and then just carefully went around and opened this up. The bigger the diameter of the sanding drum, the more it's going to match this radius and the less likely you're going to make some gouges in it. But I think I got it really nice and round. And now these just drop in. You have to use two gaskets behind them because this has got a thicker lip than this does. And this has got these weird little kind of grooves in them that these metal things fit down into. So it's also got eight screw holes. So you screw four down and then you put this on top and you put the other four screws in where this just has six. So I wanted to use these little trim rings on it. And so I had to drill two holes here. So I had four holes 90 degrees apart from each other. And I'm planning on putting four screws to hold in the driver to the box and then come back with this trim ring, put it on top of that with four more screws. And then I use my Dremel tool and then a little drill bit or a big drill bit and kind of countersunk these that will fit over those Phillips head screws so it's clamped in nice and tight. So if any of y'all are going to try to put either these or the drivers out of the 2.2A one, the three inch voice coil units, you're going to have to kind of modify it a little bit, but it's, hey, that's why we DIY. Well, that's what we call ourselves anyway. So anyway, that's kind of where we're headed with this little deal. Just wanted to give you a little update on this project. Probably going to be next week before I really dive into actually doing something with this. But I think this is going to turn out really cool. And I think aesthetically it's going to look really cool. I just, I don't know, I really like this brick red color. I'm excited to get this going. So anyway, thanks again for all you viewers. Really appreciate your subs. We're probably going to be at 10K subs here in just a minute, which is really fun. Appreciate all you Patreon supporters, folks that make donations. It allows me to go out and, you know, buy stuff like this to play around with and show you guys, hey, this is what this stuff does. So you can save money and not have to waste money buying stuff. I can say, yeah, this driver with this guy and this out of those three tweeters, go buy that and you'll be rocking. So anyway, till the next video. Have a nice day.